Hey, welcome back. We're back. To put a chat. We're back. Look, we don't... Uh, let's start this right in the top of your film. We don't think it's us. Me and the regular rock, well, we've had a drink while Phil's been doing a technical here. What we are going to start doing from next week is we're going to go live on YouTube. How about that? So then we won't have the technical problems with Facebook. If we can get Facebook and YouTube going at the same time, I which imagine is... Imagine that. Which is... Probably a step a little bit further for us with a little bit more equipment. But look, that's why we have fantastic sponsors like these. So we can get them little bits of um, little bits of uh, technical gear. So if we can go live on YouTube next week, as well as Facebook, you'll be able to watch us on the YouTube channel live and put your comments in. And you'll be able to watch us on the Facebook and put your yeah. comments in. Theory, in. Yeah. in theory, yes. Either way, even if we're just YouTube... You can still get your comments in, can you? So let's start again. Episode nine. How have we oh, got it? Yet? It's my job. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Take two, Paul. Go on. Here we go then. Episode nine of Butter Chat live from the SN Norby Source. We'll go over to you, boys. Take it away. There you go. Live and direct from the Reg to Rock there behind the camera. So look, quick intro. The Rambler. Got the Reg to Rock myself, Yaf, in the gaff. Thanks to the sponsors, Tony and Baz. BT Promotions. Help us out. We're going to be buying a bit more. Phil and Mark, Teesside Travel. Teesside Travel, yaff, gaff. <laughs> Phil and Mark, Teesside Travel, don't message me. Yeah. <laughs> Stop messaging, Paul <laughs> Berg. Listen, thanks to the club as well, uh, the committee and the members of the club, I, I thank them all the time. Why? Because they let us come here, the uh, members embrace us, and you know, they're always asking us about the, the, the borough and chats and things like that when we're downstairs. And like I say, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell on YouTube. Borough 1, Huddersfield 1... What did I say in the last, last live? What was I saying? <laughs> Let's quickly go through it because I know it was stopping and starting. Look, I was at the game. Phil was uh, is watching the highlights because he couldn't be there. Um, one thing I did forget to do, which I did on the last one before we had a technical problem. I was super duper producer, Courtney. Uh, Courtney is saying she is not very well and their little son is not very well either. So she's not here tonight. So Courtney, Oscar, get yourselves... Uh, well, really soon, and then I don't have to write my own script, Courtney. Because yeah, I cannot read anything. You <laughs> <laughs> anyway, getting back to it. First half thoughts. I was there, like I said, Phil watched the highlights. I won't lie to you, I thought the ball was good. First half. Uh, I was a little bit on the fence about the new guys maybe starting and doing, starting a game in the championship against a, a rough, tough team who come and set the, 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 the stall out like Huddersfield, Warnox Huddersfield. But to be fair, I thought the new sign has done well, Phil. Yeah, it's 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 hard not to agree. I think we did well. Um, I think Michael Carrick, after the defeat to Millwall, after the defeat to Coventry, um, it was more about not only bringing those two new lads in um, that and, and needing to start. It, it was more we need to make sure that we don't allow Huddersfield to come forward constantly and, and put us under pressure at the back because that's where I think we've not been scoring goals. But I think we've been so weak at the back so early on this season. I think we've, we've conceded five goals now this season, um, which is a hell of a lot in three games. Um, but it was more about allowing the new lads to gel with the team, the, the team that we, we know and we love to gel with the new lads. It was a confidence booster. But at the same time, this is Neil Warnock's Huddersfield that last season we went to expecting to come away with three points, then getting thumped 4-1. Um, we've I'm, lost good players. I'm just thinking of something, mate, mate, I'm going to say in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm giggling they've, before I've even said it. <laughs> we've, we've lost decent players that we had last season for that fixture. They've not really recruited anybody, um, but they came here to give it a go as Neil Warnock does. Um, so I thought we did first half. I thought we did really, really well. I mean, how have you remembered all that from the first tier? <laughs> you should be a presenter on on, the, on another show. You on a what, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, you well, should. I, I can do TV. I can do radio. We can't. Uh, let, we can't. We can't let him out with his contract. We, we can't let him out with his contract. Look, I tell you what. We talked about the new Simons, but my, my, I suppose he still is a new Simon, and I have been on it a few times. I've been critical. I haven't given pelters, but I have said that. I didn't know where Morgan Rogers played really, but he played the number ten role. I thought it was good. And bear in mind, we're only talking about the first half here because 
I actually thought Dale Fry played really well in the first half. I knew it wouldn't be long. All right. I knew it. Well, I know Dale's watching because I can <laughs> see him there. So I know, and look, to be honest, I'm not ready to blow smoke up Dale's bum. Dale probably you, would, you wouldn't think so. Dale will probably upset be upset with me in the second when I talk about the second half. But I thought the first half didn't do nothing wrong really, and and people will automatically go, "Oh, the goal!" I actually don't blame him for the goal. Really, it, it, it's one of them things. It happens. Um, but the first half, in summary, for me, I, I thought it was great. And look, I, I ended up down. And, and since we've been back on Borough Chat, and since we've been back on social media and doing all bits and bobs, now I go down. Into the concourse at half time, and all those lovely people come. Oh, what, what do you reckon, Yaf? What do you think? And all the away games. What do you think? I don't think there was anyone I spoke to in the concourse who did not say to me, "Gonna go on here, Yaf, and we score two or three. Mm. And I was agreeing. I won't lie to you. I thought, "But I'll come out here, you know, the typical Warnock Huddersfield. They'll come out, they'll set the stall out. It's only a matter of time for us to break them down." We'd had that shot with Silvera where he put one past the post. I thought Marcus Fors was fantastic going forward. Like I say, the young lad Rogers, I thought he'd fitted into the number ten role really well. So when I go down the concourse for me old bolty pie at half time, and I'm chatting to all the people down the concourse, and they say to me, "You know, it's only a matter of time, and it yeah." And I was agreeing with them. I was saying, "Yeah, matter of time." Come up. Minute 30 seconds, Paul won it. Something like that. Into yeah. the second half. Bosh. Warnocked. Typical butter. Warnocked. We've been Warnocked. 1 0 down. Now, this is where I'm going to go on to Dale Fry. And Dale, you know I love you. I know you're watching. You know I love you. But since Dale's been injured, I think, and again, we don't know here at Butter Chat. He could be getting told to do this, Phil. This could be a what, what. The management team, Woodgate, Carrick, they want him to do. But uh, I think since Dale's come back from that injury, and it was, it was a bad injury, he seems very negative. Like, I watched him pick the ball up. We were 1-0 down. It was about 10 minutes after they'd scored. He picked the ball up on the halfway line, came from the left hand, the left back, the new left back, passed it into Dale Fry. Dale's first thought and first look was not to look right and open his body out, was to look left and go straight back to De Jong. Which I think is negative. Now, if he's getting told to do that, then who am I to, to, to say anything against Carrick and the likes of Woodgate in their football and careers? But as the pain punter, looking at it, and I'm not like the punters who were on BBC Tees, we'll come on to that very, very shortly, because he has made a little appearance on there on Saturday. I'm not like the punters who, who rang up on BBC Tees and slated it. What I am saying is, at 1-0 down against, let's be honest, a team who were second best to every ball in the first half. Going 1-0 down is not the end of the world to start doing negative stuff like that. And I thought that was more of... Get away from the goal. I don't blame Dale at all for the goal. You know, he's a defender. Things like that are going to happen. But I think he could be more positive going forward. I think it's every defender's dream come the start of the season to score a goal. And, and Dale did that. You know, wrong uh, net. <laughs> Granted, I think I messaged you and said, Dale strikes again, Mr. Mistake. Um, so, Dale, when you're sending <laughs> me a shirt, mate, for the back wall, it wants to be my size and not Phil's. All right, because I, I don't think you'd be sending him a shirt. The, these. The, I don't blame him for the goal. However, there were other mistakes made all through Dale Fry's football. Um, he loses the ball. There was, there was a, I think it was when I messaged you, just before I messaged you, there was a perfect uh, example. The ball comes in, there's a player closing him down. Not, not close enough to cause Dale an issue to look for a pass or maybe clear it. But he panics because there's a player running at him. And he fumbles the ball between his... And you can see him looking around on the floor. I think, where the hell's the boy? He's like a puppy chasing a ball. And by the time he's found the ball, then he gets clattered. Then he gets taken out. Then the ball gets taken from him and something... And, and you see that more and more and more as you watch Dale Fry. Play. Well, you do if you're you, Phil. You don't if you're me, because look, defenders make mistakes. Yeah, and those who've played the game, everyone has opinions. We make mistakes. Everyone However, it's all about opinion, and that's why we have a good show here. That's why our mates, at people like Butter Breakdown, are going for I'd, awards. I'd love, like to, I'd, I'd love him to. Uh, I'd love him at West Brom to go for a corner. He needs a goal, like he, he just doesn't score enough goals. Get his head and, on it and, and, and score a goal. And and, and I, will, with every other Borough fan, I will be jumping and screaming and chanting Dale Fry's one of our own. And 
Because in the moment, that's what you do. Mm. I'll, just po I'll poke you in the eye when you do that, though, at West Brom. <laughs> so, look, before we go and speak the rest of the second half, Phil, any, any, first of all, can everyone see us on, on, yeah, on social get media? Get up, boys, you were back, if it works. Uh, well done, boys. Way, it's working. Uh, Jesse's watching. Any he ideas is. why McNair was not in the squad? Yeah, he was in Ireland. Not sure why, but I think he was in Ireland yeah. at a junior football team. He took or... them back the week earlier, didn't he? Yeah, he took, yeah. A, he took them. So... Well, we that's not official, Paul, but you are right. He did take a knock, and I think the club have allowed him to go to some tournament, I think. Don't yeah, that's what it was. Um, profile, then you've got to have two weeks. He's got to have so, so many times off, yeah. Eddie that's Fearon right. says, decent games, uh, decent game, new signing looks like decent players. Uh, Latte Laugh looks a handful of, for defenders, a few goals under his belt, and he'd be banging them in. Uh, Ibrahim Tanner says that own goal was an absolute fluke, and I, 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 agree. I agree. I just like ribbing him for it. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, Ibrahim, let's I mean, be fair though. Things. How many times was Fry pushing up and getting the numbers to pressure them? That you know that is also true. It, it, there were there were times during the game where he was making forward runs to try and force the rest of our squad up the pitch to apply some pressure. So. You know, you, you, you win some, you lose some in, in that respect. And then Matty Wilson says, I think Coburn needs some minutes. I think he'll make a difference. What a great player. So going back to the second half, I mean, great comments again by, by all of them. You know, like I, I say it all the time, you can never pull the wool over a butter fan's eyes. You know, the, 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 out, out there, and I, and I know I'm a butter fan and I'm going to stick up for them all. But to be fair, there's a lot of fans out there from championship clubs you know, I, I won't name names, Leeds United, who were uh, oh, 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 a bit like, you know, some Premier League clubs think that the you know the sun always shines out of people's bottoms, but Borough fans generally nine times out of ten get it right. Going back to the second half, like I say, uh, I thought Dill was a little bit negative, but going on to other players, um, was it Eddie who said about the latte laugh? Yeah, Eddie totally agree because I'll tell you now, we have now got a striker who can who's quick, he can create his own space, and by the way, loves a tackle. You know, doesn't mind sliding in alongside. I think he, we were talking about before we came on. A he won the corner by just sliding down the side of the player. Didn't even touch the ball. Ball goes out. Referee gives the corner. Doesn't mind getting involved. What I would say is his touch is not the best. Mm. But we did have a player called on loan called Cameron Archer, whose touch wasn't the best. No, it wasn't, no. um, so I, I agree with Eddie. I think I think he's at the ground running that lad. Thought the left back. Um, What's his Luke, name? Lucas Engel. Lucas Engel. I, I thought he looked a bit leggy towards the end. I thought yeah, he, got, he, got he to like, grew into the game, yeah. but it, it was clear that 90 minutes was probably... Yeah, he got about far, 65 but... minutes and just looked very leggy, didn't yeah. he? So, so look, and it'll take him time again. But look, going back to all the players, Sammy Silvera, like, I've had some conversations today with the lads, some lads at, at work and a lad I've grew up with all my life. Graham said to me... Uh, he said two things actually. He said one about a transfer speculation. He said one about Sammy Silver. He said, well, I don't think you need to band on. I said, Well, I'll tell you what Silver looks like to me. He looks like the very first time I've seen Isaiah Jones. Very exciting on the eye, going forward, wants to take people on. Now, will the Buddha knock that out of him? I don't know. The problem is, his end product. His yeah. end product. I mean, on another day. And again, this is not with my rose-tinted glasses on, because remember, they're only cosmetic these, I don't need them. But not with me cosmetic uh, glasses on. On another day, we're going to be, we're going to come away from that, Paul, 5-1 up. Oh, definitely. You know, you know, and then it's a yeah. total different outlook. Yeah. We don't get the idiots going on BBC Tees, slating everybody, and having a pop of Dana Mould uh, uh, and um, Maddo, and saying they haven't got a clue, they should all be sat. And, you, you know... Rome wasn't built in the day. Yeah. And, and I think Michelle Best was asked a question there. She says, Good evening, Michelle. Jesus, that never gets old. Carry on, mate. Hey, we've done that on a few channels she's, now. She's, <laughs> can't enlighten us. Um, so she, she says, Why does Sammy Silvera keep missing easy goals? Is it because he leans back when he goes to shoot? No, I think there's a really simple answer I for that. He's just desperate to score I, the first goal. I think he is desperate. Over trying? Yeah. I, yeah. I think he's, he's just. He's like a puppy that's been let off the lead in a field for the first time. He's just desperate to score in front of the fans, feel what it's like, experience the feeling. I think, Silvera, you just said there, he reminds you a lot of Isaiah Jones. When Isaiah Jones is praised by the fans, Isaiah Jones performs well. And I think Silvera is, is going to be very much yeah. one of those players. He's only young lad. Traore was the same. Yeah. He's going to need the arm, not just of the manager, but the fans. Just... 
let him know that you're there. Let him know that you you gene him up, and, yeah. and I think he will perform, and I think he will do good. But he's he's one of those players that needs the arm rather than the force yeah. that can just run through and I, shoot I, and the act bombs. Look, and, I, I thought Marcus Falls was brilliant, and, and and I'll be honest with you, I'm going to come on to Crooks in a minute. I, I didn't understand the change at all. Um, but I agree with Sammy Silvera because I, very exciting player to watch. I think when he gets one goal, he's going to want to get a few. Yeah, 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 you yeah, know, yeah. I think he's that type of player. Yeah, I agree. The only problem with that is. As teams get to know him more, they'll, just they'll probably double up. Double up. Yeah. That leaves a gap somewhere else, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, you're talking about Crooks there for, for a second, and Tony Costello's come on and said, keep Crooks out of the team. He slips us down so much. Cosy, I'm going to come my, on to it in a minute, mate. my opinion. Yeah. It's, Cosy, it's, I'm going to... It's I'm valid gonna, opinion here, I think. Yeah, yeah. But look, Cosy, I uh, totally agree. Didn't understand it, mate, at all. Like I say, I was there on Saturday. I seen the board go up, and I just thought, well... Unless we're going to say, Crooksy, stay up top, tall man in the box, we're just going to pump it in all the time and chase the game to try and get the win, but we didn't. He just went into that sort of free role, what Morgan Rodgers has. But let's be honest, he's not Morgan Rodgers' age. He's not as mobile as him. So, so nice build. I, 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 just didn't, I, just, I just didn't understand it because of it at all, because, you, you know... It didn't help us at all. It, 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 and again, look, I'm not sat here. I'm not sat here saying I know anything better than Michael Carrick. You know, the man's done everything in the game and I, I totally trust him all heartedly. He'll have his points why he brought Crooks on mm. and why he thought that, you know, Marcus Fors had to go off, for instance. He'll have his thoughts why Latte Lath had to come off with three minutes to go in a game. And I'm well aware we get that little bit of extra time now with all this time added on. But... Isaiah Jones, by the way, other than the, the pass to Silvera, for me, was a world-class pass. If you ever watch that back on, on the highlights, it is absolutely mm, yeah. pinpoint perfect. Defender didn't touch it because it's going in the back of his own net. So the pass from Isaiah Jones was fantastic. Obviously, Silvera could have done a little bit better. But the crux thing, totally with the fans, totally with uh, Cosy and the rest of the Borough chat fans, because I, I didn't understand it. I didn't understand it at all. Look, you've got no Balassa, you had no Coburn, you had no Coulson, you had no Gilbert, and you had no Piero, all on the bench who could have come on and maybe done something a little bit different than what Crooks could have done. Again, I don't want to slag Michael Carrick off. I just didn't understand it at all. Talking about slagging off. So, for those... And I know some of you did hear me on BBC Tees because I got I was getting messages straight after it to my phone saying I can't believe you get all over you know on BBC Tees. But look what it was, friend of ours, friend of the show here, and a friend of Butter Breakdown is obviously Dana Malt. Dana's on there, um, the after match reaction. I think they call it Red Alert or something like that, mm. don't they? With Maddo and uh, is it Mark Drury? Mark Drury, Mark Drury was on the, the presenter. So look. All I know is the guy they had on first infuriated me. I'm sat in the traffic, driving home from the riverside like you do. I'm going to break out into a Christmas song. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm driving home now. <laughs> so I'm no, sat, that'll be December. I'm sat in the traffic, I'm driving home, and they open the phone lines to, uh, to the Borough fans, yeah. and the first one on was called Mark, and he with came on. It was, it's got to be with a K, it can't be with a C. So he came on, and he just said, if you think that's acceptable... Playing against Warnock's side, twenty odd in the league. At that stage, by the way, we were bottom. Yeah, twenty odd in the league. A team what nearly got relegated last year. Coming on, you're telling us we've only played three games. It's a disgrace. You should be sacked. Maddo, you tell lies, and Dana hasn't got. Well, I couldn't get on that phone quick enough, Phil. I, I was flapping that phone like that to get that number on. So I had a chat with a guy uh, in the control room. And I said, "Look, get your phone here because I'm going to give him it," and I did. Because no fans above the law to me. If you, if there's any Borough fan sat out there, right, who doesn't think what they watched on Saturday against Huddersfield is a marked improvement on Millwall and forget the forget Probably. the league game, forget the League Cup game, is not a marked improvement on Millwall at home and Coventry away. Then you're watching different games mm. to me, because the two new silence coming in, and I, I, again I'll reiterate. I thought, this is a gamble to throw the dice this, bringing these straight in against a rugged Hood, Warnock Huddersfield side. Came in, hit the ground running. I know the left back got a bit leggy. I think that Latte Lath could have ran for another two weeks. Mm. I think it worked. 
I think on another day, we'd have been coming away and we'd have been talking about how many goals we'd scored there. It just, it just isn't ticking. Mm. And I get it. I get it. But in them games against Millwall and Coventry, I've come on here and said, I can see what he's trying to yeah. do. We just haven't got the personnel in the top third of the pitch. Gal was on here a couple of weeks ago saying the same thing. Caroline Walk was on a couple of weeks ago saying the same thing. Um, uh, what's your name? Uh, Adam Bragg. Adam Bragg and the, the other guy we have on as well. They, they were all on saying exactly the same thing. We get to just past the halfway line where... With Latte Lath, we did have an outlet. Do I think we need another striker? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we totally need yeah. another striker. It's, it's all right having Latte Lath who can... Uh, don't get me wrong, he is a bloody fast runner. Oh, right. It's all right being able to run and chase those balls. But the way that we're playing them balls forward to him, we know he's going to run onto him. So the chances are that he's going to be running to the byline, the touchline, to pick that ball up, which means he needs to play it back and somebody needs to be there... Yeah. And at the minute, there's nobody in that, yeah. that space so, to, you want, you to pick it up. And that's, and to yeah. up I hate to say it, but I would love to see Latte, Lath and Tuba probably playing yeah. in the same team. And we're not going to see it. We know, we came on yeah, we, we, we know we're not. But look, let's... So look, yeah, just getting back to my little cameo on BBC Tees. Thanks for Maddo and Dana and Mark for allowing me to come on and, 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 and vent my anger. I can't... I don't get Borough fans who, who come on and say things like that live on air. First of all, uh, should we be sacking someone from his job for having an opinion? You know what I mean? And this bloke was coming on. I think Matt Drury should be sacked. He's there to give opinions, isn't he? You know, uh, and obviously Dana and Maddo. Maddo's been in the game a long time. Dana knows her stuff when it comes to the butter. She knows her stuff. And, and what they were saying is, look, let's just give it time. You know, we're three games in. The big point, what they didn't make, which I'm going to make tonight is, let's roll the clock back 12 months. Where were the butter, Paul, 12 months ago? Second from bottom. Where are we today? Second from bottom. There we go. So, Michael Carrick got us into the playoffs. Very nearly the playoff final, by the way. And this time last year, we were second mm. from bottom. We are now second from bottom. I think he'd be the first one to say he'd like to hit the ground running more. Yeah. And but look, Rome wasn't built in a day, and in Carrick we trust, I think. Yeah, and Eddie Fearon sort of backs that up. He says, the fact that we're only three league games in is a good talking point. It's only three games. There's 43 left to go. From what I've seen, particularly on Saturday, it's just a little more confidence and sharpness that's needed. Top man. Eddie couldn't believe... I could not agree with that more. He's like an expert summariser for Borough Chat, isn't he? Oh, Eddie. <laughs> yeah, Tell you what, he's, like... a top, he's a top, top man. We Tell spend half an hour talking about and he just, in one I mean, sentence, one, one, like one paragraph, he's just... Because, get him on. Because he's a legend. That's why. He, well, that's what he is. Look, uh, I know you want to have a little little chat about Akpom. Uh I don't know whether you've seen it today on social media. Uh, it, I think it's in the, the back of the Daily Mirror as well. Uh, Warnock's comments on Akpom. Uh, I'm not, t I'm, you know, I'm not saying this verbatim, but basically his words were something like this: "12.2 .2 million is a bloody miracle, uh, a fantastic deal for the club and the player." Warnock said about um, Akpom. He said he'd watch videos of him when the Buddha were looking to sign him, and he didn't do anything he'd seen in the video. He'd done at Rockliffe mm. when he was in training with Warnock. Hence, he was out on his bike, shipped out on loan. How, how much did we get for him? Because wasn't it undisclosed? It was undisclosed, it was undisclosed but, but uh, Warnock's got... put it on their website. Yeah. Someone dropped a clanger there. Yeah, so we said undisclosed and Ajax have said 12.2 million. So, I mean, what do you think of Warnock's comment? Is it a little bit of that sort of like little, little jibe at the club? Because he did say, well, those upstairs, meaning Gibson and Bowser, would be happy with yeah. the money. Um... But what he did say is, I hope that Ajax haven't bought him as a striker because he's, he, not. he's not and he'll be back in English football by the end of the year uh, or the end of the season, I think he said. And we've sort of got to trust what Warnock says there because he got it spot on with Jed Spence. Yeah, he did. So... He did. And to be honest, he got it spot on with Isaiah Jones because he said that Isaiah Jones will either be playing in the Premier League or, or the Championship, a bit like Jed Spence, or he'll be going back to non-league yeah. where, where he's come from, a bit like Jed Spence. Um, so look, give us your comments on that. What, what do you think, Walmart? But you've got a, a point on Akpom, haven't you? You just want me to start making more enemies, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, no. So, so my my point was, and it's it's quite simple, really. Um, there are more and more people on social media sort of saying that there is no way Akpom could have um, 
equalled or surpassed his 29 goals this season that he got last season. Um, before Cameron Archer came to the club, before Aaron Ramsey came to the club, um, Akpom was in double figures. Akpom, without those players yeah. helping him out, had a very good goal tally at that point in the season. I just don't understand why Borough fans suddenly saying he'd never have done it, you know, without him actually being given the chance to do it. And, and it wasn't... Akpom was at the club for three years. Um, he, he wasn't wanted under Warnock. He, he wasn't wanted under Wilder. He only came back under Wilder because we had no other striking options. Yeah. And then he's played himself into the shop window and got a, a big money move. Well, again, those, again, so and this is Warnock's comments, he said there's only Michael Carrick could have got that number 10 role out of Tuba. Hmm. He said no other manager would have done it. There's only Michael Carrick could have done it. So that's a pat on the back for Michael Carrick, really, hmm. from Warnock. An all dead to, 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 to a new manager, really. So look, Whilst we're on controversial stuff, and look, we've got to talk about it. We know, I know what we're probably going to talk about now. It may upset some of our bullet chat viewers, and turn it may, them back on you. Yeah, and it may. But look, we've got to talk about. It. I'll tell you for why, because we try to keep our finger on everything, Borough, and a lot in social media. And you'll read it as well as we do. There's a lot about Mason Greenwood uh, at Man United at the minute. We we all know that Man United are doing this internal investigation. Well, it's, it's concluded today. Yeah, uh, it? it's concluded today. They're just waiting for a decision. No, they've, they've, they've announced that as well. Oh, have they? Yeah, so have I missed that? You've missed that. They've announced. So that. what's the what's the decision? Um, they find it in the club's best interests and in Mason's best interests that they mutually terminate yeah, his contract. Get away from Manchester yeah. United. Right. So so okay so. That's probably where I've read it all then from because that wasn't in what I read today. But what I did read is the Borough and Michael Carrick is the man to, to relaunch Mason Greenwood's career. That's the, that was the sort of social media bit. And I won't say I got where I got it from because it's not for everyone, you know. And I'm open for a debate on anything like this. And look, I'll, let, let me be devil's advocate in the middle. And I know Phil's on this. And I don't disagree with you, Phil, to be honest. But from a devil's advocate in the middle, this is a man who hasn't been found guilty in a court of law um, and is free is free to go and start his football career wherever he wants to go. Now, some people, some Borough fans and some other, other fans who may say, yes, bring it to our club. He'll put 15, 20 goals in for us. He'll create more, you know, things like that. And there's other people, Phil, and again, I'm not against you because I totally agree. Bear in mind, towards the end, we're going to talk about our Borough women's team. So how does that sort of tally up? What's your thoughts about Mason Greenwood potentially putting a Borough shirt on? Uh, it, if the club were to do that, uh, I would never support the club in any way, shape or form again. Um, it's not that the CPS decided that there wasn't enough evidence to charge. Um, because we all saw, we all heard mm. the, the the evidence that was given to us. And, it, you know, people are going to come in and say, that's not the whole story, the context, blah, blah, blah. I think the first five words in one of the videos was enough for me mm. to listen to. Um, but just because he hasn't been charged with an offence does not mean that the offence wasn't committed. Yeah. We know that the statement was withdrawn... Because it, it came out that the victim had fallen pregnant and she was absolutely crapping herself at what was happening and what would happen and all of that sort of stuff. And she wanted to stop it all, didn't she? Yes. Yeah. Basically, basically wanted so, to stop it. I, I would not, you know, I would not touch him with a barge bomb, nowhere near him. And, and I think for, for every female fan at a football club, for every female employee at a football club, for every female that associates themselves with a football club they need protecting mm. and I think the decision from Man United is right to say that it's not in the best interest for him to continue his career here mm. they're going to support him in finding football elsewhere I don't think that's going to be in England well I think it will be abroad. I'll tell you where I'll tell you where I sit on it I totally agree with you Phil because if it's the right move for Manchester United to terminate their agreement with Mason Greenwood, 
then it's not right for my club or our club to entertain it either. Totally agree with you. The club's going in the right direction with Millsborough women. It's going in the right direction with, with our sort of a, um, the diversity the club has now with all the different fan groups. Mm -hmm. You know, eth ethnicity and, and 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 your gender, and they've gone Incl inclusion and in inclusion. General, yeah, you know. they're going down. They're doing all the right things now. They're ticking all the boxes, and to bring someone like that in, regardless whether he's never been found guilty in a court of law, and again, I do stand on that bit the side, and I go back to the Benjamin Mendy thing. Benjamin Mendy was acquitted by a jury. You know, 12, 12 of his peers acquitted him. Yeah. Is a different. It's different to, to the Mason Greenwood. Now, look, we're not making any aspersions. We don't know whether he's guilty or not. That's, and, and we know that this would have touched an air with some of our our butter fans tonight. But it's out there in social media, and and you will have all read it today. Air, right? And it yeah, and look, it touches an air with us here. I, I'm with Phil. I'm, I'm with the regular rock. As a as a fan group, as a, as butter chat, we probably wouldn't like to see Mason Greenwood in a butter shirt. You know, we, we think it'll bring negativity to the club. I think it'll bring negativity to the team. I think it'll bring ne negativity to the Riverside. I'll tell you for why. Because you would always have an away support, guilty or not. And you only have to look at Chet Evans. He got tortured at every... Still does to this day. Because mud sticks. So, it, it, then chance will be shouted regardless of where he goes. And there's probably only one place for Mason Greenwood to resurrect his career. And it's probably where all the money is in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. I think I think you're right when we spoke about that off there. So look, let's get rid of that. That's a Mason Greenwood clean up. We're not scared here on Butter Chat to chat about anything. No. no. You know, if it's out there in 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 the social media Ulu, we we want to talk about it. And actually, everyone that's commented has said, uh, I agree, Phil. Well said. Um, no way, can't do that. Wouldn't want him anywhere near the club. We don't want Greenwood anywhere near the Borough. I just I just so. think it brings it. Just think it would bring a cloud over the club. Anyway. A uh, couple, couple of other things. Couple of, before we quickly chat about West Bromwich Albion, I mean, I'm not going to chat too much about them because obviously it's, we've got a show next week and, and we'll be chatting all about it. But um, we've got a couple of players being linked with today. One, one is Glenn Kamara from Rangers. Before I go on to Mowat, who was on loan with us last, last year, what do you think about Glenn Kamara? Have you seen that? So if you haven't seen it, Glenn, Glenn Kamara is a 27 year old midfielder. Uh, he's played over 100 times for Rangers up in Glasgow. 50 international uh, appearances for Finland, Phil. Um, and I think he started ch chatting to the regular rock. Mr. Stato himself told us he started his career at Southend in Arsenal as a boy. So he's been in England a while. He's been in England and Great Britain a while. Um, so with the fact that we've had no, no chat about the injury to Tommy Smith, we don't know how bad it is, how long he's going to be out. There's been nothing on that. We are aware... Again, from the wreck of rock, but he's had his spies out. Matt Clark is now out on the field, kicking a ball, and he's, you know, that could be the answer to our extra centre half. Because I'm, I'm in the camp that I think the Borough need another centre half, and I think we need another centre forward. Matt Clark could be the answer once he's fully fit. Mm. Um, so, what's your thoughts on Glenn Kamara? Do you know about him? Is it someone who could come in and, and maybe, you know, play, play midfield for the Borough? The other one is Mowat. Now, we had Mowat on loan last year, Phil. Now, I've been a big a big supporter of... Let me get it right. Is it Barazla? Oh, God. Did I get it wrong? You got it right earlier. Barlasser. Yeah. Off air. You said it right every single time. Right. Barlasser, innit? Yeah. Ignore, get... ignore the camera. Right, yeah. So, any, so I was chatting to my mate at work today. Uh, again, lad I've known all my life, Graham. He said to me... He said to me, uh, you know, we were chatting about Mowat and I said, oh, well, you know... And, and he just put it like this if you're 1 0 up in a game, who would you bring on? Would you bring Barlasser ba 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 on? Or would you bring Mowat on to see the game out? Who would you bring on, Phil? Barlasser. Right. And, and I'm saying that because we had this conversation. You're saying there. that because I'd say Mowat. <laughs> if I'd have said Mowat there, it's, that's, I'm saying Mowat because we had that conversation earlier. So if I go back to what I originally said, I said Barlas, so I think he's a much better ball player. However, your argument out there before we came on the show was that's right, but Mauer is that tough tackling, uh, put all the fires out sort of player. I think Barlasser is has got everything that Housen has. 
But I hate to say it, at Housen's age, he looks quick around the pitch. Barlas at the minute looks a little bit flat-footed. Now, whether that's an, an injury he's carrying or whether that's just the way he plays, I don't know. He looks flat-footed and slow to me. And you can't have Hackney and Barlas are playing together like that. At least Housen knows that Hackney's going to do his running for him. And they've got this understanding, yeah. haven't they? Yeah. Where Barlasa wants to bomb forward a little bit and he wants to play Which, which is a shame because in the pre-season games, um, yeah, he was, he was, was doing a real well. bit Barlasa and, and Hackney. They, they actually well, looked like they'd been playing together a couple of years, but you, you're right. The, the time that they've spent on the pitch now the season started, it, it, it's not sort of... But I mean, look, the, I mean, look for the Borough. We've got a little bit of cash on the hip. Mowat, you know, he's in the last year of his contract. You probably get him for less than a million quid. I think that's not a bad signing, in my opinion. I think it would be a safe signing, yeah, because he, he would come in and do a job. He might not do the job. He's been around the block in the championship as well, him. so he's good for the dressing room. Well, he, he was, he's, he wasn't, wasn't he captain, captain somewhere, and then he, he, he was a he's West, captain at West, 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 West Brom, wasn't he? So you know, that's another player that we can bring in. You know, Lenahan captain's experience. Tommy Smith was captain uh, where he was. Yeah. You know, we, we're doing well at bringing in experienced championship players that have that leadership quality if he's available I think he's certainly worth a punt because he will help us out at some point in the season now Saturday sees the the, the Borough going down to West Bromwich Albion away um, I'm sure you'll be going on someone's coach are you? I am yeah Teesside I'm, I'm thinking, what are you going on <laughs> Teesside Travel is taking some coaches down so yeah so look still seats available I presume there, there is still seats available uh, just send us a DM Teesside Travel not me there you go. Not Paul, send it to so us. So there's still seats available if you want to go to the away game. Uh, £30 a seat and uh, there is a pub stop yeah, on the way we, down. Uh, don't tell him where it is. No, no don't. It's no, class. No. It's class. Anyway, get your, get your money off the dogs. Anyway, listen, that's a little, <laughs> little, 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 little thing. So look, look, West Brom away. Look, let's let's be honest. They're 13th of the division. They've won one. They've lost one. They've drawn one. Obviously, but drew one. Obviously, the Borough, we've drew one and lost two. Big thing for me is... They've scored five goals, but they've conceded five goals. We've conceded five goals and, scored and only scored one. But what I will say to you is, what, what that bodes well is, is they do let goals in. So if we can be as attack-minded as we were on Saturday going forward and a bit of luck falls our way... Mark, it's, it's all right them letting goals in, but we've scored one goal in three games. So... That would be great. Deal will be back on top there. That would be great if we were scoring goals heading to West Brom, but we're, we're shipping goals and not reducing that deficit at the other end of the pitch. Now, last season we went there, they scored two goals in the first 10 minutes. Me down, we it. played 80 minutes of... It was crap football. Well, that that well, 80 well, minutes was let's absolute, that crap out. Oh, absolutely God. rubbish. But that was for 80. It wasn't like they scored two goals in the 80th minute and it was 10 minutes. Do you, we had 80 minutes to turn that around or at least come back and we couldn't do it. Do you think we're going to start a 4-3-3 like we have been away from home? Or, uh, sorry, like we have been at home. At, at or do you think we're point, going to go defensive? At some point in the next couple of games, Michael Carrick is going to have to just go for it. The fans are going to want to see that. And I, I don't want to say it, but I certainly think based on the way we started last season under Wilder... Um, the guys up top are probably going to be keeping a close eye on it as well. Yeah, he's got to go for it. So look, either at West Brom or a, another fixture in a couple of weeks. But he, he's, at some point, he's going to have to go for it. Well, he's saving grace as really bought in the couple of weeks after he got a win there. That saves him for. Oh, I suppose you'll be taking Teesside travel taking a coach twenty seven pound a person to Bolton. Oh God! Tell you what, just send us a DM. On oh, Facebook absolutely. Page. Yeah, not get not, not Paul. In. Look, I'll just finish off with this. Uh, but a women, uh, was it the first game Paul played? Yeah. Drew nil nil. Uh, Drew nil nil. They had a player sent off in the first half as well, so they, they yeah. played for nearly a full game uh, with only ten over seven hundred spectators at the first game, which, which is amazing. Which is fantastic. You know, hats, hats off to, to but a women. Look, if the but if you can get there, go try and support them. And you're hot off the press, but a women in September. Have got a home game at the Riverside Stadium with prices adults ten pound, kids a fiver. So you'll be able to go and watch Borough Women at the Riverside, which will be fantastic as well. Maybe hopefully we can get there and maybe cover that as well. Um, hey, 
we had a few technical issues at the start, but thanks. Yeah, it's uh, been all right, though. Yeah, it, thanks. Loads to chat about. We'll be chatting all about West Brom uh, next week. We'll have uh, Mr. Adam Bragg, I think. will be, uh, be in here. Not Adam Bragg. Mr. Adam Bragg. Mr. Adam will be in here. Adam Bragg it's will like be DJ. sat here. DJ Adam DJ Bragg. DJ Adam Bragg will be sat here with us DJ. next week. DJ. So look. DJ. Get it right. So look. From all, all us here at Butter Chat, Courtney, Oscar, get yourselves better very soon. We will see you all next week from the Rake the Rock, the T-Sand Rambler, Yaff in the Gaff. See you next week. See ya.